Hello and welcome to this edition of Telescope Bracket Madness. Joni picks telescopes from our brackets. See if you can guess which one winds up at number one. So here's how this is going to work. We have eight telescopes. I'm going to bring them out in pairs and Joni's going to just tell us which one she likes the best. So here are the brackets. I'm going to put them up on the screen here. I've tried to seed them in such a way that the brackets make sense. If you want to, pause the video and fill this thing out yourself and see if you can guess which one comes out at number one. Okay, so here's our first bracket. This is a telescope called an Astrophysics Stowaway. And this is a telescope called an Orion Star Blast. And Star Blast is a reflector, show the audience here, catches light off of a mirror in the back. And you look into the side of the front here, so Stowaway's kind of the opposite. It's got a, it's got a lens in the front here, see that? Oh yeah. Show the audience the lens, and you okay. actually look into the, the back of the scope. So, have any idea which one of these you prefer? Well, it depends on, are we talking aesthetics? Which one gives me a better view of the sky? Oh, just your gut reaction. My gut think? reaction? Yeah, which, which one would you, would you pick? Well, I like the name Star Blast better. You like the name Star Blast? Yeah. Okay, well, that's perfectly valid. I mean, it's the same way I buy a car, by color or name or whatever. So. Okay, good. Yeah, Star Blast. All right, good. Star Blast wins the first bracket. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so you picked the Orion Star Blast. The telescope you did not pick is called an Astrophysics Stowaway. And this is a limited production telescope from what many feel is the top of the line telescope producer in the entire world today. And they have very expensive prices and they have waiting lists. I actually sat on a waiting list for 19 years to get oh, one of these. Oh, that's this yeah, one. Yeah, okay, that's, that's that one. I don't have that kind of time. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah, well, you should know. You did my actuarial <laughs> table. Yes. <laughs> we won't talk about yeah. that. Okay, good. Sorry, that's my... Okay, so here's the next bracket. This one is called a Celestron C5, and it's a little bit similar to the Star Blast. It's got a mirror in the back. Yeah. But it bounces the light around so that you actually do look into the back of the scope, which is a little bit different than a reflector, which okay. you look into the side. Just a different design here. And this one is called an Orion Short Tube 80. All right. So any idea which one of these you prefer? What's your gut reaction? Wow, this is hard because this reminds me of my coffee travel mug. Okay. And I love bringing coffee everywhere. But this obviously it looks like a wine bottle okay and it is almost happy hour so i'm going to go with the orion okay good the short tube 80. so the telescope yeah. you did not pick is called the celestron c5 right and this is a schmidt kasser grain this is the smallest one in their line okay so they make it from a five inch all the way up to a 14 inch so the 14 inch looks like a rain barrel it weighs like 50 oh, pounds oh yeah and if i had a c14 we actually couldn't put this on the table no. so uh yeah it's a little compact telescope it's very commonly recommended for beginners. Yeah, well, okay. yeah, I like it, but okay. I like the wine bottle shape better. Okay, good. Okay, so here's your next pair of telescopes. This one is called a Questar, and it's a little bit similar to the Celestron C5 you saw before. There's a mirror in the back. Oh yeah. And it bounces the light around and you look into the back of the telescope here. It's got a little dew shield here to collect yeah. keep dew from collecting onto the back oh, here. Dew shield. Yeah, and this is something called a Galileo scope. Oh yeah. So what this is, it's actually a, it's a kit. Okay. So the parts of the kit come out like this. Show the audience here, but there are about, you know, 30 or so steps that you use to put this thing together and okay. instructions are here and you actually, you know, put the whole thing together and, uh, you know, it's different idea. So, all right. Do you have any idea which one of these you might prefer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. I'm not a DIY, is that what it is, person? Okay. Like 30 steps is about 29 too many. Okay. So, this one, and I like that do catcher. Okay, too. good. So, all right. So, no, no contest. Okay, good. So, the telescope you did not pick is called the Galileo scope. Right. And this was created for the International Year of Astronomy back in 2009. Okay. So, you've hung out with me enough to know that we hate those department store grade telescopes. We hate those things because they're just, they take people out of the hobby, they're just too cheap. So, a group of people got together and they said, we're going to make a cheap telescope that doesn't do any of the bad things that those department store telescopes okay. do. And everything here, actually, you put everything together. Even the eyepiece, the thing that you look through, you have right. to actually put the lenses in there and put the whole thing steps. together. Yeah. yeah. And the idea being that, you know, we, if you do that, 
that you would learn how a telescope works and yep. you, you get something out of that. And it's also a thing like the family could do together, like the family puts yeah. the telescope together in the afternoon, we could all use it yeah. later at night. So the original idea was this was going to, they were going to try to bring this thing to market at around $20. And they missed the mark. I think it was like $30 or $40 when it first came out. It's a little bit more than that today, mm -hmm. but you can still buy these. It's still in the lineup. And if you're an educator of some kind, they give quantity discounts and you know, use it as an educational tool. Well, it's a great idea. It's a great concept. Yeah. I got to say, what department stores do you shop at? Because I've never seen a telescope at oh, a department okay. store. The next time you go to a department store, look in the toy section. You're going to find stuff for $50 right. there. It's all made of plastic. It's all Those right. are really, really bad. Well, I'll stay away from <laughs> yeah. them. Okay. You've warned me. Okay. Okay, and here's our final bracket of the first round. We have two telescopes here. One is called a Takahashi FS60, and the other one is called a Mead ETX. So it's the ETX... Similar, you've got a mirror in the back here, that bounces the light around, you look into the eyepiece here. Takahashi is a typical simple refractor, gathers light here, and then you've got an eyepiece in the back here. Both of these happen to be missing their eyepieces, I just don't have enough to go around. So, any impressions you have on either of these two guys? Gosh, this one looks a little more aerodynamic. Okay. Um... I'm really stymied on this one, but I like the color of this one, so yeah. I'll go with that. Okay, very good. Meet, e Meet ETX makes it into the second round. Yeah. Okay, so the telescope you did not pick is the Takahashi FS60, and this is a premium brand. It's a <laughs> Japanese, it's so people call it the Japanese Lexus of telescopes. I have inexpensive taste. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, you know, there's a big line of these. Like, these get really big and expensive. This is the smallest of their current mm -hmm. line, I believe. It's a 60. It's kind of cute, and it doesn't really gather much light, as you can see. But these telescopes, for some reason, function very well for astrophotography. And I actually have two of these. One of these I have set up just for imaging, and one of these that's set up just for viewing, for visual use. So I, you know, so I don't have to switch back and forth. So it's kind of a cute little telescope. It's not all that practical because it doesn't gather that much light but what is there is perfect i'm surprised you only have two ed no the way do you see the cost of these things you'll know why <laughs> <laughs> all right well money's no object then okay so here's the second round and we have two brackets in the second round these are the four telescopes that made it out of the first round we have orion short tube 80 and the star blast all right. Idea. I am going to stick with the Star Blast. Stick with the Star Blast. Okay, oh, very yeah. good. Okay. Yeah. So the telescope you did not pick is the Orion Short Tube 80. And this is similar to that Takahashi FS60. If you notice, it has a similar form factor. The one you have too. Oh. Yes. And this one looks more like a wine bottle like the other one. It and, does. And the reason is because it gathers more light. This is an 80 as opposed to the Takahashi, which is a 60. Right. But unlike the Takahashi, which is a very expensive telescope, this is quite inexpensive yeah. and it's very often listed as something that we would recommend to a beginner because you can get into a refractor, see if you like it, and not spend a lot of money. So this has been in their catalog for 20 plus years. Looks like it may be out of the catalog for now, but if you do want to buy one of these, they've made about a bazillion of these things and you can get them on the used market. Okay, and here's our second bracket of the second round. We have the Questar and we have the ETX. It's right. kind of similar form function here. You've got this curved plate in the front and you've got the mirror in the back. Same thing here. You've got that curved mirror in the front and the mirror in the back. This does have the dew shield. This doesn't, but it has a drive base on it. You could buy it either way. This actually can come looking like that and that one can actually come looking like this. So I don't actually have all the versions to show you, but um, try That's not to have right. the form factor to be the deciding issue here for you. Yeah. Well, I have my own set of criteria, so okay. don't worry about that. You know, when I see this, I think of men who wear platforms in their shoes to try to kind of get some height and look a little more okay, whatever, and that turns me off. Simple. You know, you know you're taller than me, so I... I, I, I <laughs> and you don't wear you, platforms, you so that's where we're friends. <laughs> no, just don't start putting platforms okay. in your shoes. This is simple. I love that do thing. I think it's... I'm going to stick with this one. Okay, well, good. 
So if you may, may or may not be surprised to hear this, but the Mead ETX is a cheap clone of the Quest. I thought so. Yeah, so I thought so. It's so, trying too hard. Yeah. So the Questar is, a, is a rather expensive telescope, and Mead decided to clone this and make it, uh, it's an ET, it's an everybody's telescope. Okay. So if you notice, they even tried to match the paint, they yeah. matched the form factor, uh, and these were fairly inexpensive when they came out, somewhere around $500, which is a fraction of the price of the Questar, and this is in fact one of the best tele selling telescope lines of all time. I don't personally care for this line myself, my, my views on this are very well known. There's a lot of plastic here. And I think it kind of gets in the way, and they've had some quality control issues in the past. But this device actually does have its fans. And here we are, folks. We're going to determine a winner here right now. These are the final two telescopes. Neither of these have lost anything so far. We have the Questar versus the Star Blast. Man. What do you think? I'm a nervous wreck. Well, I'm going to have to go with the Quest Star. Okay, good. And I'll tell you why. All right. Because it would fit in my purse. It would fit in your purse, okay. Uh, yep. I'm trying to think that is the smallest telescope we have here, and uh, I think the Takahashi might fit, but it is a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. No, this would fit in my purse. Okay, so the telescope you did not pick is the Orion Star Blast, and this is one of the most commonly recommended telescopes for beginners because of its low cost. You used to be able to get these things under $200. Lately, with some inflation here, it's creeping up towards $300. And depending on where in the world you happen to live, these, these things come out of China. So wherever they brand label them, the tube color may be different or the name may be different. But this 114 millimeter F4 re reflector, tabletop Dobsonian style, is available all over the world under I don't know how many different nameplates. Okay. So it's a beginner telescope that we recommend. So wow. very good. So the Questar wins. The Questar quest wins. wins. I hope nobody takes my recommendation <laughs> seriously. <laughs> but yeah, the Questar wins. Okay, so now that we've determined the winner, that would be the Questar. We're going to go into what the, what they call the loser's bracket. Oh, okay, so we found the one that won. Now we're going to go drill down to the other side. Mm -hmm. So these are the four telescopes that did not make it out of the first round. So one of them is the Astrophysics Stowaway, and the other one is the Celestron C5. So do what you did before. Tell me which one you prefer. All right. Well, I don't like calling them losers. Okay. But I prefer the coffee mug. You prefer the Celestron C5? Yeah. Okay, very good. So actually in the loser's bracket, this is the one that moves on because we're going to try to find the one that is at the very end. If you say so, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is the second loser's bracket. These are the other two that did not make it out of the first round. One of them is the Takahashi FS60 and the other is the Galileo scope, the kit. So do you have a feeling as to which one of these you prefer? But, yeah. Okay. You sold me on this one, not because I want to put those 30 pieces together, but I love the idea of seeing a family together working okay. on it. I just love that. So that's my preferred. Okay, very good. So in other words, in the loser's bracket, the Takahashi would go on. Oh, no, yeah. then reverse it. I want that one to go you on. You want this one. No, no, you want... <laughs> no, tell me which one you prefer. This is the one you prefer. Yes. Okay, well, I'll handle the brackets. Oh, okay. good, good. No, I we'll prefer do... that one. I, right. want to, I want families to have more activities to do together. All right. Yeah. Okay, folks, and we're down to the end here. So these two telescopes have never won anything. Oh. And one of them never will any win anything at this point. Oh, so no. one of them is the Takashi FS60. The other is the Astrophysics Stowaway. So tell me which one you prefer. The one I prefer? Yes. Uh, all right. I prefer the one like a wine bottle. Okay, very good. So the Astrophysics Stowaway finishes in last place. Mm. So in first place, we have the Questar. Last place, we have the Astrophysics Stowaway. How did you do? What do you think? <laughs> Is there a controversy brewing in astronomy land? Has there, been, has there been a change in the force? You know, a cosmic disturbance? Let us know in the comments below. Let us know what you think. How did you do in the brackets? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.